Are you ready to get technical? This video will help you understand what to document for SOAP and OTS. In other words, how to document software you don't develop yourself. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Christian Kessner and this video is part of my course on software for medical devices and IEC 62304. You can register for it by clicking the link in the description or you can go to medicaldevicehq.com and see what else we offer. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and receive notifications so you never miss out new content. Now, let's get to learning with the help of the second part of our lesson on SOAP software. Enjoy! The use of SOAP software shall be documented and as already mentioned before, the FDA guidance for OTS software and SOAP requirements found in IEC 62304 are phrased slightly differently but close enough. For this video, I will reference the FDA OTS software guidance when explaining documentation requirements. The guidance can give you the impression that you must create a single document for each software used. But I encourage you to find a pragmatic approach to make the requested information maintainable because OTS software is often subject to frequent changes. It is recommended that the OTS software documentation includes the following main topics. You don't have to read them all now. I will explain to them to you shortly. The point is that there aren't too many topics and they could be arranged in a tabular format. A tabular format might be beneficial if you would like to update documentation automatically in conjunction with a software build. The FDA doesn't require a specific format, only that the information is correct and well organized. Let's get back to the actual content. The first thing to do is to determine the appropriate documentation level for each OTS software. Because the documentation level determines how much information you must provide. The documentation level can be either basic or enhanced. How to determine basic or enhanced documentation level can be found in the content of pre-market submission for device software functions. Next is a description for the OTS software which is expected for both basic and enhanced documentation level. The description shall include answers to the following questions. Please stay calm, you're already familiar with most of the bullet points because they relate to what I referred to earlier as the qualification of soup items, but some are also new. In addition to the qualification related questions, there are three additional topics to be covered in the basic documentation. Let's start with the first bullet point. What is it? It's mainly a general description including the title and manufacturer of the OTS software. This also includes release information and, if applicable, associated documentation. In this part of the documentation, you also explain why the software is appropriate for your specific medical, medical device and if you foresee any potential design limitation when using the OTS software. Then there is a line in the guidance asking how will you ensure appropriate actions are taken by the end user. Most probably for all embedded software systems, the answer to this question is not applicable. But when working with larger software systems, it is different. You, must, you may use SOOPs which have configuration interfaces or might even be updated by the end user. A closely related question in this guidance is how will you keep track of or control the OTS software? If you're working with OTS software integrated into your medical device, IEC 62304 configuration management should support you in answering this question. But if you involve the end user in installing and configuring OTS software, please make sure there is sufficient information in the instructions for use and perhaps even consider self-testing features in your software to, to validate proper installation of OTS software. Now let's move on and look at the main topic, risk assessment of OTS software. Risk management should always be present when working with medical devices. Hence, the topic applies to both basic and enhanced documentation level. The FDA guidance doesn't specifically call out the application of ISO 14971 on risk management, but the requested information results from proper application of ISO 14971. And the proper application in this context means that you should include how to evaluate OTS software related risks in your risk management plan and include risks and appropriate risk control measures in your risk assessment. Risk assessment is the term used in the FDA guidance. Typically, I refer to this document as a hazard traceability matrix because the definition of risk assessment in ISO 14971 
only covers risk analysis and risk evaluation, but not risk control. Since the requirements on risk management are generic and not for each OTS software, I suggest leveraging this when you organize the OTS software documentation. So instead of describing the risk assessment of each OTS software, why not place risk management information at the beginning of the document and reference documents in your existing risk management file? Now we are reaching a topic where there is a difference between basic and enhanced, and that is OTS software verification. To avoid redundancy and overlap, the FDA simply references the guidance on content of pre-market submission for device software functions. At first glance, it seems to be an intelligent approach, but the pre-market submission guidance references system tests, and that is not a perfect match when testing OTS software, because OTS software testing should preferably happen before the system test. The FDA has solved this by allowing you some pragmatism and asking you to provide documentation commensurate with the documentation level. So to make a long story short, for basic documentation level, you are expected to summarize your testing activities, including details of relevant system level tests, protocols, and results. For enhanced documentation level, detailed unit and integration test documentation should be added to the package. The last main topic of the OTS documentation is assurance of development methodologies and continued maintenance of OTS software. For basic documentation, this is not recommended documentation as part of a pre-market submission. But please remember, it's still part of your technical documentation following IEC 6234. For enhanced documentation level, it gets more challenging, and I would even say a lot more challenging. And here's what you are expected to do. Information to provide an assurance that the product development methodologies used by the OTS software developer are appropriate and sufficient, and mechanisms exist for assuring the continued performance, maintenance, and support of OTS software. How about knocking on the doors of, for instance, Google or Apple and asking for their unit test results? I guess I won't open the door. In such cases, you must work with risk management and justify why OTS software is acceptable to use despite the lack of insight into their development methodologies and maintenance work. Alternatively, you can use OTS software suppliers who can provide enough details. I hope you now know the documentation expected when working with SOUP or OTS software items, and that you need to invest some effort in qualifying such items before they can be released as part of your software system. Now let's move on and have a few words about working with SOUP and SOUP maintenance. When reading guidance documents and standards, you can easily get the impression that SOUP software items should be treated differently to all other software items. And as you have just learned, yes, there are specific expectations on OTS software documentation, but in all other aspects, you shouldn't differentiate too much between SOUP items or items developed by yourself. For example, in architecture design, SOUP items appears as any other item in your documentation. A SOUP item is not divided further, which strictly speaking means you could call it a SOUP unit. So to verify SOUP items or units, I suggest you apply the same procedures and work instructions you use when working with software unit implementation for the code you develop yourself. Sometimes SOUP are comparably small and don't fit as items in a software architecture. In practice, finding them as integral part in larger software units is common. If so, they should still be identified and subject to the requirements you learned in this video. So when working with SOUP items, try to avoid reinventing the wheel by creating dedicated work instructions to be used for SOUP items. Instead, leverage what you already have and apply your existing toolbox to SOUP items as well. For maintenance, it might be easy to get the impression that SOUP maintenance is something you need to deal with separately from software maintenance, but I would say it sh you shouldn't. The main difference between SOUP and software maintenance is that you need to go outside of your organization to find information about updates, bug fixes, and patches. Identify where you can find SOUP maintenance information and document it in the basic documentation for each SOUP. In your software maintenance plan, I suggest you define the frequency for how often you should review SOUP maintenance information. This can be expressed in terms of time, such as review on a quarterly basis, or you conduct a SOUP maintenance review before each major release. 
In this video, you have learned about the differences between SOUP and OTS, but mostly the, the similarities. You have also learned about documentation and that you should avoid treating SOUP too differently to other software items. That's it for now. Do you have any thoughts or comments you'd like to share? Drop them down below and let's talk. Are you on LinkedIn? Because we are and we would love to have you or your friends from the medical device industry there. Find us at Medical Device HQ. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and until then, goodbye.